why did you start to work with which business did you make? Well, well I've never really worked, but I had I have had jobs like odd jobs here and there. My my first job on my own was when I was at McDonald's. But um, that was in another city in Wisconsin when I moved back to Wisconsin. And um, I worked there during the winter time. It is cold. <laughs> and I don't miss the winter at all. I had to walk in snow. And uh, it's cold. <laughs> so that's what I remember the most about it. Being in the snow, catching the bus, and working for a year. I don't miss that. And um, then after that, I worked at, um, I came to Memphis. I worked for um, a cleaning company for FedEx. FedEx. I worked there for about a year. And then I got a job as, um, the job I applied for, I, I ended up getting as a general assistant, administrative assistant. I worked that for like six months. And I left. I left and I moved back to California. I moved back to California and I moved and I stayed with my friend for a few months. And that was it. Okay. Uh, before you became a Muslim, what was your knowledge about Islam and Muslims? But maybe you can say uh, part to part. I mean, what was your knowledge about Islam? What did and I? Then talk about the Muslims. What did I know about um, Muslim and uh, Islam before we uh, convert to Islam? Well, before I converted, the only thing I knew about Islam was what I saw from the Nation of Islam. They were a little bit angry, <laughs> so that's that was my impression what the, the nation of it, which Malcolm X was a part of. So that was my impression. They were like angry and mad about life. And I didn't know that that was just a sect of Islam. And um, when you grow up in the Midwest, you do run into a lot of Muslims, particularly Arab Muslims. So, um, wasn't a good impression <laughs> not not because they were I don't know it's just um they were it was mostly men I came in contact with and it just, they just came off can I say it can I say what it was <laughs> as um a little bit uh aggressive <laughs> towards women <laughs> So that's how, that was my impression of them, kind of always aggressive, like always trying to talk to me. And I was like 11 years old, so I didn't understand that, you know, as a kid. I was just, I just knew I was afraid to like go to their stores. So that was my impression of Muslim men. Muslim women, I just thought they were quiet, couldn't talk, you know, had no voice. That's, that was my impression. Clothes, no voice, man dominate. That was. Uh, then let's come to the story about uh, how you became Muslim. I gotta tell it again. Okay, how I became but, Muslim. Excuse me, I stopped you and this you start from the beginning. But uh, this, this uh, how much you can make it like composition and long? Can I sum it up? Yeah. Well, make it long? Yeah, if, if it's possible. Okay. Um, how I became Muslim, I met, I moved to Tennessee, and I met um, this Egyptian who worked at a store. I think he was Sudanese, though. And um, there was a program on that was talking about Islam. I think about the war in particular. And um, I was saying, I, I don't understand, like, why someone doesn't say something about, you know, the angry Muslims. And he made a comment like, what do you want someone to say about that, about an angry Muslim? Like, what do you say about Christians? And I, and I was like, but we're not blowing up 
stuff. That's how I felt at the time. I'm like, we're not blowing up things, and you know, what what should I say? I have nothing to say. It just seems like you you know you're angry for nothing, and and he was just like, go educate yourself. And so that's what I started to do: educate myself, get to know a little bit more about the religion. Um, the more I, when you read it, and the more it you kind of see it I'm more of a visual person to actually see the words being put to action like the praying is is so different when you pray you can in Christianity is particular Southern Baptist you're not supposed to ask God for what you want you're not supposed to pray for yourself you're supposed to pray for others you know and you know good health that's about it but you can't ask him for something tangible you can't ask him for that you know it's just not a no-no but here you feel like at least I felt I felt like I was closer to God every time I pray that's how I feel I feel closer to to him and you know it's just a humbling experience to get on your knees and to do that five times a day is it's just humbling to me it's just a very wonderful experience and you know I, I can't really put it into words but I just feel closer to him I feel like a personal relationship with him with Allah and what's the other question that's all okay, <laughs> okay I took the Shahada last year on my birthday during Ramadan which is one of the biggest reasons why I became Muslim <laughs> Um, it was a big influence on me. Um, my father stopped speaking to me for a month. Um, he felt like I was spitting on his mother's grave. So, um, my sisters, they were just wondering because I'm, I'm, they were just wondering if it was just something I was doing again, like if it was something new and interesting that I just wanted to do and they thought it was past, like it was a fad, that, you know, I don't know what they, like it was, wasn't real. They just thought it was something I wanted to do for now and maybe I'll get over it. That's how my mother and my sister were, but they were still supportive because my sister's best friend is Muslim, her best friend is Muslim for like 20 years. But, um, and my brother, also when I was in Memphis, I went to, a mosque. I wanted to speak to someone and I met the shape, but I didn't tell my brother that that was where I was going because he is Christian. He attends church. He's heavily influenced by his Christianity. After I took him from there, we left. He was like really upset and he was angry that I took him to a mosque. And he was just like, you know, next time just tell me. But I knew he wouldn't take me if I told him where I was going. So it was a negative reaction at first. And, um, but my brother is like coming around. My, my father was speaking, but he thinks, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, he, he thinks like, like I'm being brainwashed. Sometimes he, he thinks that, like, but uh, he knows I'm an independent thinker. He knows that about me. And I try to remind him that, you know, that but we're like really, really close. And so anything I do that's outside of his box, he's like, why are you doing that? But we speak, we don't really talk about religion. We used to, but we don't now. So everybody else has been real supportive. My friends especially have been really supportive.